hit the ranger boat. Don't tell them. Learning how to skip a jig is something we should really all strive to master because if you can place your jig in an area where other guys simply cannot get their bait, you're gonna be a lot more likely to catch a lot more bass. Looking up ahead of me here, you know, you have a dock and if you look just right up there, there's a couple of those pontoon floats that have a small opening in them. And that's kind of the darkest spot on that dock. And that is where I would expect a bass to be. So if you can make an, a, a very accurate cast up in that spot, then it's gonna help you to catch fish that other guys cannot. So. That's why you should learn how to skip. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Outfitters and the Bruin Cooler. Depending on when you are watching this video, Memorial Day is just around the corner. And at Sportsman's Outfitters, they're having some big sales on some of their coolers, which can become very useful around that Memorial Day season, as well as the entire summer. So if you are on the market for a cooler, click the links down below in the description. You can find hard coolers, you can find soft coolers, you can find the cooler that you like at a great price and you're also going to greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Now, although skipping lures is easier with a spinning rod, today I'm gonna to talk specifically about the bait caster and that's because pretty much 98% of the time that I fish a jig, I'm fishing it on a bait casting rod in real setup. Now, before we talk about how to actually cast, how to actually skip a jig, the motions of everything that you need to do, it is extremely important, probably the most important part to set up your jig properly. Now, one of the biggest things when it comes down to your jig is that not all jigs are going to skip equally. The biggest thing that you want in a jig is to have a very flat Head. You know, a lot of times if you can find an Arky style jig, that is the one that you want. Now, these are my actual two favorite skipping jigs right here. This is a Strike King structure jig, and this is a Freedom Tackle structure jig. Now, if you look at these two jigs, the biggest characteristic that they have in common is that they have a very flat head. And just like skipping a stone, the flatter that rock is, the further it's going to skip. And the flatter your jig head is, the further further it's going to skip. Now, when it comes to the size of jig that I skip, it is almost always a half ounce jig. You can skip with a 3 8 ounce jig if you want, but I think a half ounce is really the perfect weight because you actually want a little bit of weight to create some momentum that when it starts skipping across the water, it will skip really, really far. Like I said, you can skip a 3 8 ounce jig, but because it is a little bit lighter, the drag of your plastics in your skirt will slow that jig down and you won't actually be able to skip it quite as far as a half ounce jig. Now, speaking of your skirt and your trailer, these are two really important factors that I think a lot of guys don't always take into consideration when it comes to skipping a jig. Typically, the little bit more skirting material you have on a jig, the more drag you're going to create and the little bit slower that jig is going to skip. So anytime I am skipping, I always like to take that jig and I'm going to trim the skirt up just a little bit. I'm actually going to hold it just like like this and I'm going to trim it just below the hook. Simply taking a little bit of material off that jig is really going to help that jig to kind of actually skip faster which makes it go further up underneath the stuff. Now the next important part is actually the trailer that you put on the back of your jig. You can skip with a ton of different trailers, but some trailers are going to skip a little bit better than others. Now, my personal favorite trailer is the Strike King Rage Crawl. Now, the reason that I like this crawl over other style crawls is that if you actually look at the bottom of this crawl, right here where I'm pointing, it is actually wider than most of the other crawls on the market. So if I take this Berkeley Chigger Crawl and I lay it on top of the Rage Crawl, you can see that that Rage Crawl actually sticks out a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Now I know that that eighth of an inch may not sound like a lot, but that eighth of an inch gives you a lot more surface area where the water can catch and it really allows that jig to skip a lot easier. It's really in the details when it comes to skipping a jig. Now typically on this Rage Crawl, there are two two sections that I'm actually just going to bite or snip off with my scissors, which just leaves that thicker, wider part for my trailer. The next thing I'm gonna do is simply feed that trailer straight onto the hook shank, and I wanna make sure that this is as straight 
as possible. Now, if you look at this bait right here, this is perfectly set up for being able to skip this thing like a rock. Now, before we jump up on the front deck of the boat and start skipping, let's talk about your rod and reel combo because this is also really important, especially your rod. When it comes to a rod, you can skip with a rod that is eight foot long if you want, and you can skip with a really short rod. Now, if you're just getting into skipping a lure, I would suggest a shorter rod, something in that, you know, six foot, 10 inch to about seven foot range. This is a seven foot rod that I use a lot. I also use a seven foot, three inch rod a lot. That range between seven and seven, three really, really works out well for me. But probably the most important thing is the action of that rod. You do not want a broomstick. You do not want a very stiff rod when it comes to skipping a lure. You want kind of a fast action rod, a rod that kind of has a good 80-20 bend where that top part really bends a lot, but the base of your rod has a lot of backbone because if you're skipping a lure, you're typically skipping it into heavy cover. So you want enough backbone to pull that big fish out of heavy cover. Now, as far as line goes, you can skip with mono, you can skip with braid, you can skip with fluorocarbon. If I'm fishing a jig, I'm fishing it on 20 pound fluorocarbon 90% of the time. Now, when it comes to a reel, the gear ratio is not going to help you to skip better or not. I typically use a 7.1 or an 8.1 to one gear ratio. This is the Bruin ELS reel. It's a great reel because it has a ton of different settings on it, which are extremely important when it comes to skipping. Now, a lot of guys, when they skip with a bait caster, I see them tightening their spool tensioner up actually too much because they're afraid of getting a backlash, which is perfectly normal but if you tighten that thing up too much you're really going to handicap your ability to actually skip that lure so what i like to do is take the play out of my spool so i'm basically going to tighten that spool tensioner up where there's no play in the side to side action of your spool. Now, once you get kind of the play out of the spool, just crank it up about another half turn on your spool tensioner knob, and that's going to be set just about right for skipping a jig. Now, when it comes to your brakes, I'm gonna set them at basically the 50% mark. So if you have brake settings that go from one to 10, I'm gonna set it at five. If they go from one to 20, I'm gonna set it at 10. This Bruin ELS reel has actually 80 different settings on it. So I'm gonna set it right in the middle, right about 40. Now, if you have brakes that are on the inside of your reel, basically turn half of them on and half of them off and you're going to be good to go. Now we got our equipment set up. Let's jump up on the front deck and start skipping. Now, before we start skipping, there's a few things that you can do that can really help you. One, just make a cast with that lure and let the line that you're going to be skipping with get wet. If that line is wet, it's going to slide on your thumb a lot easier and feathering the spool with your thumb is a big key to being able to skip. So that's the first thing you do. Also, if you're really afraid about backlashing, you know, make that same cast that we just talked about and actually put a piece of electrical tape on your spool and that way even if you do backlash it you might ruin 50 or 60 feet but you're not going to ruin your entire spool that is a big help if you're really scared or if you're just getting started on skipping so now that your thumb is wet and your line is wet now you can kind of start skipping now if you see up above me i have kind of an overhanging tree and that's what i'm going to skip underneath. Now, when I skip, I don't want my lure to hit way out here and skip all the way up to that tree, even though that would be really cool looking. I actually want my first skip of this lure to hit just in front of that tree. If you start skipping out here, a lot of times that lure is going to lose momentum and you're basically not going to get it to the tree. So when you go to skip, just make sure it lands like that just in front of the tree i land about five foot in front of the tree and it just skipped right on in there the easiest cast to learn how to skip with is an underhand roll cast okay and to do an underhand roll cast this is basically what i do the lines in the water like this i'm going to swing that bait towards me around and then cast it like that that's kind of a normal cast that you usually do right so the line is coming at me in the water swing it towards me and around and that's cast. I'm not trying to skip right now. So that's an underhand roll cast. Now let's actually start skipping. And one big thing that's really important to know when you're skipping is keep your elbows 
close to you. I see a lot of guys that try to overpower their skip where they really got their arms out here and they're really slinging that bait. And the other thing is you actually don't need to move your arms a lot. You're really letting the rod, the weight of the lure and your wrist do the most work. If you watch me just do a typical skip, I'm actually not moving my arms a whole lot. And you see how it was just very easy. You don't wanna wing the thing. It's just a very easy motion. The other thing you don't wanna do is don't start from dead still and then try to whip it in there like that. You know, you really want this to be a fluid motion. That's why I always kind of pitch the bait out there like that. Let it swing up and around and then just skip it just like that. Now, when you're first starting to skip, don't worry about skipping under anything yet. Just try to start skipping. As you can see, I really don't have anything that I'm skipping under right here. I'm just getting the motions of my cast. I'm just gonna do some underhand roll casts just to kind of get the motions, get a feel for my rod, get a feel for my bait and everything like that. That's all I'm doing is I'm just doing some underhand roll casts. I'm not skipping it at all. Now, as you start skipping that bait, what you're gonna do, when you go to make that loop, you wanna release release your lure as close to the water as you can without it hitting. It's just like skipping a stone. If, you, if you've ever skipped a stone and you get really close to the water, I remember as a child skipping a stone when I was in water that I was like almost nipple deep in, and you would skip a stone like that and it would just go for miles. It's the exact same thing. If you, if you try to skip from too high up, your trajectory is going to go down and that bait is not going to skip. You want it to be as low as possible without hitting the water at first. So you wanna just start making those underhand rolls and slowly start working that bait into the water. Now, as you skip, like I just did right there, if you noticed, I raised my rod tip and I feathered the spool with my thumb. Raising that rod tip as that bait is skipping just kind of helps to keep that lure up on top of the surface a little bit longer, which helps you to get more distance. Reel that bait in, let it swing towards me, around, and I raise the rod tip, I feather the spool. That's all it is. Oh gosh, that is, oh man, that would have been a perfect way to end this. But guys, that is exactly why you skip a jig. If you can get it underneath stuff, a lot of times that can get you the bite. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about a bait cast reel like this one that I'm holding and really how you go about casting it better, I'm going to leave a link for a video right here. So click on that video next. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.